Right. Good afternoon everyone. Um, so we're going to do another little tour of the park today. Um, so I thought today we'll start at the bottom of the park um, and just sort of have a look at the bottom half of um, what we've got here. So around the pet village and the um, tropical house and those sorts of areas. Um, but I've had a few people ask about behind the scenes stuff. So that's where we're going to start off. So here we... What's going on here? Right. <laughs> Here we are um, in the corridor for the pheasant aviaries. Um, so we've got a few pheasant species here and we'll have a look at one of those a little bit closer in a minute. Um, but what I really wanted to show you is a species that I really like, one of my favourite um, primates here. Um, but you might miss them when you're usually here. So these are our Spix night monkeys. I'm just going to peep my head in the door and we'll just have a quick look at these guys. So you might usually miss these. Um, so they are nocturnal primate. Um, so these are our Spix night monkeys. Um, we are more than likely the only zoo um, in the world that's got these on public display. Um, so according to records, so we can't find anywhere else. There might be a few other little zoos um, so where they're from in um, South America. Um, so this is one of our family groups here. So we've got mum and dad, the young baby at the top there, and then a slightly older one there as well. So they do live in family groups. Uh, they are just a really, really nice little species of primate. Um, not much is known about them in the wild. Um, we don't even know sort of exactly how many of them there are. Um, but like I said, I think they're just really special little primate. <laughs> up again right now the next speech I want to talk to you about um, is another one that you might miss or just walk past or not realize quite what they are and that's these guys here so these are actually um, one of if not the rarest animal in our park uh, they're certainly the rarest birds um, so they are Edwards pheasants so they are classed as critically endangered although most experts think that they are um, extinct in the wild now. So they're from Vietnam. Um, and I believe the last confirmed sighting in the wild was as far back as 2000. Um, so they, they are sort of really, really endangered. There's not many left at all. Um, even in zoos, there's not a huge number. Um, but we breed them. So these two, these are boys. Uh, the females are a brown colour. I'm going to see if I can see one of our girls in the um, tropical house. Um, and yeah, so they're a gorgeous little bird. Um, we breed them. So those two guys come from here. And hopefully one day we might be able to get involved with a release project for them. Um, that's sort of our goal with them. So then we've got a few of our other parrot species here and our some pheasants. They are exempt from social distancing, yeah. <laughs> but we, uh, at the park, um, our staff are not. Um, so even here, they still have to be nice and careful while they are um, working. So we're trying to keep any jobs that require more than one person to a minimum. Those two are brothers, yeah. The two um, Edward Smithers, they're brothers. So they actually, oh. So it's a bit noisy in here, so I hope you can still hear me. But that there, that is their dad. So that's the Ed Edward's present dad. And if I sneak up on it, this is the female. So this is their mum. So I said the female of the species, they're brown. And then the males are this nice sort of bluey, blacky, um, shimmery colour uh, with the white tail. So obviously in here we've got a lot of rainbow lorikeets. They're the ones making all the noise. And 
My top three animals, um, I'm a big fan of primates and reptiles, so my actual, absolute favorite animals are the graze monitors here. Um, and then I'm a big fan of the orangutans and the chimpanzees. So I don't usually spend an awful lot of time in the tropical house, especially at this time of year where things are starting to bloom. Um, I do have hay fever and it starts. I'm boosting these a lot in here, but I'm taking one for the team today. So, over there in the background, that's our common crown pigeon. So, he came to us from Singapore. And here we have an eclectus parrot. So we do have a red one as well. So they are um, sexually dimorphic. So we've got, there's a green one and there's a red one. So we haven't got any butterflies at the moment. It's always this loud in here. <laughs> Always. Yeah, you can, you can hear them from outside the tropical house as well. So if you're ever wondering um, if you haven't seen the night monkeys before and you think, oh, actually, I'd like to have a closer look at those, um, they're in these three enclosures up here. So we've got three families that live here. Um, so sometimes you have to sort of squish your face up against the window to have a look. Um, but yeah, they're over here. The crown pigeon, a lot of people say he's friendly, but he's only friendly to visitors. Um, he doesn't like staff very much. <laughs> How many people work here? So usually there's 80 people who work here. Um, but obviously at the moment, um, all of our sort of main office staff and um, uh, sort of hospitality and catering, they're all not working at the moment. So at the moment, um, we've got, I think about 28 or 25 or so active um, staff. I'm not 100% sure on the exact number. So, I know we had a lot of people asking about the red pandas. There, there. So, they're a bit difficult to see at the moment because we've got the sunlight up there and they're up in the trees. I can see one out at the moment. Maybe we'll circle back around to them. Now I have got some food ready. Um, we have got, so one of the red, it's just at the top there. I'm going to come back around later to see if they come down. But for now I've got some food for the meerkats. I'm sure lots of you miss feeding the meerkats. The park's not open at the moment, no, we've been shut for a few days now. So I've got some mealworms here for the meerkats. Oh no, the balance for the red panda is absolutely incredible. Um, the binturongs, which are at the top of the park, they're even more agile. Uh, they've got a fully prehensile tail. Um, but the red pandas, they really are good at balancing all those little twigs. And then we've got some black crickets for the meerkats as well. Let's spread them out. Right. So in the wild, these guys will eat a lot of beetles and scorpions and things like that. Put these boxes away. 
So I'm not going to take you in the reptile house today. Um, I was going to, um, but we've been having a lot of problems lately um, with me losing signal while I'm walking around. Um, so I thought, well, I will give that a miss because uh, I'm pretty sure I'll lose signal in there. Um, right, let's see if the cussy mants. So we've got cussy mants here. Um, so I don't know if you can see. So there's one up the back there, so just going outside. I'm hoping to try and show you a few bits that you might usually miss. Uh, I know that the a lot of people do miss the cussy mats. Um, because I think especially here you can see that they're just a, a little brown animal on the brown <laughs> wood chip. Um, but they are gorgeous little things when you do get to see them. We don't have gorillas, uh, but we do have um, chimpanzees and orangutans. So that's the two great apes which we've got here. So um, I'll get a little bit closer to them in a minute. But here we've got so the white stalk and three pink backed pelicans. So we've got um, three here, so two boys and one girl. So these used to be up on our top lake. Um, and they have been down here for, ooh, I think it must, I think that was last year. Um, they do really well down here. I think you can see them a lot better there now. So then we've got the flamingos. Let's go see and see the flamingos before we go to the otters. I probably won't be going up as high as the dinosaurs or lions today, but the lions they're doing really well. Um, so all of the, all of the animals are. I can, I'm happy to report that everyone's nice and healthy and doing really well. So here's the flamingos. So the flamingos, just like the um, um, crowned um, pigeon, they do act differently around us to how they do around you. Um, so with visitors, they come right up to the fence. They're quite happy around there. Uh, but if they see people in uniform, um, quite often they stay out of the way. Um, and part of the reason for that is that um, also we need to give them medication, like wormers and things like that, uh, which they don't like. They're a bit like kids; they don't like their medicine. So they, when they see us coming, they think they're going to get some medicine. We're not going to fix the lake walkway. Um, who knows if one day we might replace it, um, but the way it is at the moment, um, it was never built um, for the sort of visitor numbers that we have. So it was built before um, the current owners took it over. Um, so it wasn't very sturdy for sort of thousands of people a year. But we'll see. We'll see what plans we have for them. Do we have a lot of birds who just turn on and visit leave? Um, we do have a lot of ducks that come in and eat the, our duck food and then go again. <laughs> um, I don't think we've got any baby bats at the moment. So these are our, our uh, smooth coated otters. So we breed these guys here. A lot of the birds actually they know they know our staff, so they um, they don't like um, our black uniforms either. Um, they're a lot smarter than they look. <laughs> and here's our wolf. So we saw these the other day. Um, Try to see if we can see them from the hide, but it doesn't look like it. My personal favourite animal in the park are the Grey's monitors. Um, I'd like to show them off as well, because a lot of people don't realise quite how special they are as well. Um, 
so but there if I go in there I'll just lose signal so maybe I'll try and get some pictures for you oh, there's a wolf so that's the male he's on the run from me I'd love to see the baby moon bear as well. I haven't seen it in real life yet. Either. I've just seen the same pictures as you. Um, we're limiting the number of um, staff we have in the moon bears at the moment because they can be a little bit shy and protective over their babies, which is understandable. Um, so it's just two or three members of staff who have been up there and been lucky enough to see them. Um, I might be able to go as far as the tortoises, probably the African spur thighs. I might go up there and finish up there with the spur thighs and the macaws. So these are Barbary macaques, who we saw the other day. So they're definitely not practicing social distancing. They are always grooming each other. It's a big part of macaque social life. And so they're very, very social animals. We've got a few of the lower ranking ones. Um, they're usually sort of more on their own. Um, but a good tip that they have for trying to get up their rankings is they'll go and groom the higher ranking animals. So for example, the male, um, most of the time they try and stay out of his way. So that's Momo, so that's the guy in the, on the floor there. <laughs> a lot of, so I get involved with um, a lot of the animal movements here. Um, so sometimes, obviously, animals, they do move on to other zoos to join new groups. Um, and I'm usually there when animals move. Um, quite often I'm there when they get um, sort of caught up at the other zoos or transported. Um, quite often I'm there when they have medical things done as well. So there's a lot of animals, sadly, that don't trust me. Because um, they think maybe I'm going to move them off somewhere else. But... So I do, most of my work is paperwork based. Uh, so they don't see me that often anyway. Um, but yeah, they're a lot calm around the keepers, but obviously they are really tied up at the moment, trying to make sure everyone stays safe. Right, so here's our parrots. Um, who have we got? So we've got a Moluccan up there. So there's our African greys. No, African greys in there, sorry. That's one of our galahs, sorry. Hard to see their colours through the screen. So there we've got some yellow-headed Amazons. Umbrella cockatoo on the floor there. So this here I think is Chico. Um, it's one of our ones who talks. But he's probably not going to talk to me. If we have a quick wander up to the macaws, where you see the tortoises as well. It's one of our hard working keepers. I just accidentally called one of your galahs an African grey, Becky. <laughs> That was Becky, she's our head of birds. So the mandrel's always in whenever I come past here, which is a shame. So that's one of our boys over there. So I'm zoom in. So a big alpha male 
mandrel is probably one of the most impressive primates you'll ever see. The flamingos eat a specialist pellet, um, so it's sort of, um, it's quite. A, uh, if you get the wrong food, <laughs> uh, it can have quite strange consequences. Uh, so obviously they get their colour from their food, um, and if the food you get isn't quite right, um, they can eventually slowly start to go grey. Um, so it's really important to have a good quality uh, food for them. Lemurs huddling up for some sun. Oh, they won't focus. Um, I I'll try and show you the chimps in a sec. Um, but last time I went in there, it did cut out because uh, I don't get very good signal in there. So let's we'll have a quick look at the. So we've got our African spur thigh tortoises here. And then we've got some macaws. More keepers. <laughs> So our Lima um, enclosure is actually a walkthrough, um, and when all this started with the coronavirus, that's actually the first thing that we closed. Um, just because even though there's no one's really entirely sure, um, if there are animals that are going to be susceptible to it as well, most likely it would be sort of some of the non-human primates, because of how closely related to them we are. Um, so we didn't want to take that risk. Um, right, so we're going to go into chimps now. So you have to apologise after pop back out if it does. So here we've got Tara with Elizabeth. You can see Elizabeth's feet there. So they have got some silage on the floor. So this is leaves um, which we cut during the um, and then we put them in barrels and let them sort of partly ferment <laughs> phase using them. Not as food, but as a sort of cape. That's not going to work when you stand up. Um, and that way we can get, we can keep the brows a little bit longer for the winter months when we haven't got any fresh leaves on the trees. <laughs> All right. So we lost you in the chimps again, um, I had a feeling that might happen, um, and so we're not going to go back in there. So I think I'm going to leave it at that for today, um, maybe another day we'll do the top part of the park, um, have a look at the big cats for you. Um, and if there's anything else you want to see, just send, send us a message on Facebook, and we'll see what we can do. Do for next week is put together a proper schedule um, so you'll know each day what we're going to do what sort of time and we'll do a few um, a few animal talks and things for you okay so thank you all for your support while we're closed we really really do appreciate it um, it is a tough time for us um, so we do appreciate all of you coming around and having a look at these feeds um, supporting us online uh, a lot of people do ask about how you can support us um, so there are there's a link in the description for this video um, where you can see about how um, you can support us either with money or with food donations or anything at all but even just being there for us and being ready for when we reopen um, is really really appreciated so we will see you again probably tomorrow cheers bye